Climate change is being driven by the kind of uh, economy that the economy that we have, you know, an economy that's based purely on growth and exploiting natural resources and people for that matter. Um, so uh, this is, you know, uh, with the growing world population, this is something that we have to start looking at straight away, you know, and, uh, and change. So uh, there are a whole number of converging crises now uh, in terms of uh, not only financial system that we've got and the way of do that way of doing business, but um, also in terms of uh, environmental crises, uh, climate change is the most obvious and biggest one. But we've also got uh, huge crises with uh, water. You know, all over the world, the water supplies are running out, aquifers are being drained that won't be repleted uh, in time. And um, soils, uh, soil erosion is another major issue, and the state of the oceans as well, and forests. So there are a whole number of issues where we're really coming up to a crunch point, and I, I really don't think we have the, the chance. The only choice really is between um, being you know, passive victims of this or actually getting ahead of the, the game and, and, um, and trying to sort out some of these problems before they actually hit us. Where, where did the finance come from for bailing out the banks? You know, did that come from the private sector? No, it came out of the public purse actually, and you know, we've all got into serious debt about that. And it's been shown very clearly that actually the money that was put into bailing out the banks that was found in the space of a few days uh, would have been enough, more than enough, to solve the climate problem once and for all. You know, so this is just incredible that we can find the money to bail out the banks, but we can't find the money to save the planet. Um, so it, you know, it tells us something about the priorities of the, the current system that we've got. In the short term, I think we have to engage the governments because the institutions are not going to change rapidly enough um, to solve some of the very urgent problems like the climate change issue. And uh, you know, the International Energy Agency has said that we've got five years to solve this problem now to prevent dangerous levels of climate change um, in a way that's not being done by the UN process. So that's something that's got to be very, done very quickly. A little bit beyond that, I think we need to uh, start looking at syst systemic change, you know. And this is not the old recipes of the uh, socialist left or whatever. This is this is just something that's um, you know it's just a fact of life that our financial system is is not working anymore, and we're also running up against all of these kind of natural limits that are set by the planet. So, so we're going to have to uh, address that, you know, pretty soon as well. So both really, I'd say the governments in the short term, but just a bit beyond that, we're going to have to uh, go a bit deeper, I think, in our, in our demands for change. The, the whole point of being here is um, that it's not just another afternoon protest and then we go home. You know? Some people said near the beginning of the time we were here, you've made your point, now you know, clear off. Um, but the whole point is that uh, we're being persistent about this, you know, and, and we're a bunch of determined people and we're going to go on. And we're determined to go on for, for years if necessary, you know, until um, significant changes are made in the way that the economy is run and, and politics as well. Because a big, a big part of this is about democracy. People feel that they've lost power and lo lost control over their lives, you know, whether it's at work, uh, in terms of influence in government and so on. They feel there's no real choice anymore. So, um, you know, democracy is a big part of it too.